have room for this take. It has nothing to do with barbecue, and I apologize up front. But let me get a drink in. It has come to my... Look, I was down in Washington, D.C., as I had told you guys in the front of the show. Had some business down there, was trying to uh, tie up some contract talks with some major, major people, some top men in the industry. And regardless of how well it did or did not work out, okay, Chad, sometimes it's good to leave the illusion of swearing. You'll see that. You're good. You're, you're developing as a host. You'll see when and when not to use the F-bomb. You're just a brutally honest person that likes to say F a lot. Mirror it. Work with it. Have some fun with it. So I was down in the nation's capital talking with top men about uh, potentially syndicating the show and working up contracts and all this other stuff. And uh, we were also going down to visit my uh, wife's sister, who lives just outside in Herndon, where I ate at that horrific restaurant, Red Hot and Blue. And she, potentially my fault, a little bit, they have pets. Okay, they have a couple dogs, they have a cat. I'm not, I hate cats anyway. Who cares? I'm just not a pet guy. I don't have any pets. I uh, had a dog growing up. I, I was ambivalent to the dog. I don't care. Um, I'm not against people that have dogs. That's fine. Have your dog. That's cool. Something, there, there needed to be a dialogue uh, or, or pretend, uh, potentially a, a more in-depth dialogue than maybe what took place. With uh, my wife of uh, now 14 years. Did I mention that it's uh, my 14th anniversary today? Getting it on. Getting it on. Get it, dude. And my sister-in-law about my kids who are just, I hate to say it, they're pussies. They're scared of everything and especially dogs, which is fine. I mean, kids this age, 10, 8, and 6, it's not like unless you've been raised around them, you're innately scared. They're a little startling. They can be intimidating especially to a six-year-old you have a i think it's a full blood germ a full blood german shepherd it's like 100 pounds it's very intimidating dog even to me as a grown-ass man let alone somebody who you know dogs bigger than the kid so we get down there and evidently there wasn't enough dialogue or enough understanding between the two ladies on uh, you know how this whole thing was going to go down so when we got there dogs very excited kids very excited all of this stuff Little one is not taking so well to the German Shepherd, which is understandable. Looks, I mean, the dog looks intimidating. You've seen German Shepherds. They look like they could bite your throat out and would be happy to do it. I'm not saying this dog is that dog, okay? Just going off of looks, they're intimidating dogs. That's why police use them and why you use them as guard dogs. They like to, you know, be all intimidating. Kind of like me. So, after about four hours... The dog had a little girl backed up in the corner. She was a little spooked out. And this is where I have to start separating now. There's, there's two kinds of, of pet owners I have found out now. And I'm going to explain them to you here in a second. But here's what happened. We were there no longer than four hours. That's right. No longer than four hours. We were packing up and we were heading out. No. Get that big stuff out of here. What happened, you might ask? Well, let me tell you. Uh, at some point in time, my in-laws also came down. They were bringing some stuff down for my sister-in-law. And uh, the kid was freaking out about the dog, which I completely understand. I was sitting in the couch. I didn't actually see it happen. Uh, blah, blah, blah. My mother-in-law tells my sister-in-law that she should crate the dog up because, you know, freaking the, freaking the kid out. Well, that was not good enough for my sister-in-law. She was very upset with the recommendation that she caged the dog, uh, that she didn't feel that the dog was doing anything wrong. Nothing was happening. Uh, the kid was just scared. And, uh, you know, she, the, the kid was kind of running around and the cans were up in the air and it was drawing attention to it. Uh, you know, Marley was drawing attention to herself and that was exciting the dog and this and that and the other. Well, look, she's six years old. Her hands are going to go like this. She's going to be running around. She was just in the car for seven freaking hours when we were driving from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame city down to the nation's capital to visit with top men the following day. She's going to have a little excess energy to burn off. She's scared of freaking dogs. So here's where the dialogue potentially didn't take place. What happens when or if one or two or three girls become fantastically afraid of the dog. What happens then? 
and then we can make our decision on where we want to go from there. Evidently, that didn't take place. So when my mother-in-law made the uh, suggestion to create the dog, my sister-in-law just blew up about it. We packed up. We were out of there. You know, we were like, I've been here. No, I've been here. We were out. So there you go. We were there, and then we were not up in there. And what I have come to surmise after evaluating uh, something that uh, had to take place that we didn't uh, figure out taking place, we didn't expect to have to go then stay in a hotel room for the next two nights while we were down in D.C. We were there to visit you know, my sister-in-law and her husband, who I love, and it didn't work out that way. And here's what I've come to surmise, folks. And you uh, guys on Instant Chat, you feel free to weigh in. And think if, if my two, uh, these are, are pet people, pet guys, if you want to call them. You have, two, you have two versions. The first version is this pet person. They have pets. They may or may not be related to you. You may or may not be driving far distances to visit them. They are pleased that you are bothering to, to make the trip down. And they will go over and above to accommodate you, somebody who does not have dogs in their house, somebody who has small children and could potentially be intimidated by any type of dog, whether it be a shit zoo, I didn't use the beep there, Chad, or a full-blooded or Rottweiler or pit bull or anything in between, bull mastiff, English mastiff, whatever you want, whatever dog you like. But they are under the uh, impression right off the bat that they will go over and above. They will be extremely hospitable in the fact that if something is going awry with your children and the dog, they will put the dog in a cage, or perhaps they will even offer a front to put the dog in the kennel for the two days that you're going to be there. So there, there isn't any of this potential ickiness that actually transpired when we were down there with my sister-in-law. The, that's one type. That's, um, I don't want to say polite pet owner, but that's somebody that realizes that the human interaction of not seeing you and making the effort to get down there and we're all going to have a good time together. We're going to see uh, United States, United States. We're going to see Washington, D.C., all of this great stuff together as people. And again, I might be coming off as a little anti-pet, but I'm not. But they're going to go over and above to make sure that uh, the human aspect is preserved and they can uh, forego the, the, the pet interaction for 24 hours or 48 hours or whatever the case may be. That's pet owner number one. I know a lot of those pet owners. I appreciate those pet owners. Then there's pet owner number two. Get that big stuff out of here. You know who you are. Because if I didn't just describe you and you own pets, I'm about to describe you. And you're probably not going to like me very much. But guess what? I don't care. I really don't. Because I understand. In the core of my very being, I understand that you love your pet more potentially more than humans. I've heard people say it all the time. I love my pet more than human beings. I'd rather be living with pets and animals and humans. Well, you say that until you actually have to go out and live outside and eat dog food and lick your ass and balls. Then it's not so fun anymore. Then it becomes very real. And then you want to live with other people in a house and eating food like steak and hot dogs. Not licking your balls and ass. Because you can, right? Because why does anybody do anything? Because they can Dogs lick their balls in their ass because they can. Okay? There's no other reason. There's no other reason. Anyway. You, secondary pet owner, love your pet. And you have no idea. You are clueless. You are aloof. And you can't understand why anybody could even be remotely afraid or intimidated or standoffish to your pet. I'm not talking about... You know, cats, maybe if you have an allergy to a cat. I was once scratched in the face by a cat. I just hate cats. All cats should die as far as I'm concerned. I don't like cats. But I like dogs. I'm a dog guy. I like dogs. I'm not going to own one, but I like them. Neighbors have dogs. Had a dog growing up. All this great stuff. But when the dog is not jiving well with the human element that is in the house, this type of pet owner, part two, thinks that uh, the... The foreign people that are in the house, this is something that they're going to have to get used to and have to accommodate with. Now, in certain instances, I'm not necessarily unrelenting to that fact. If it was a small dog uh, or something that I feel that uh, my youngest daughter was going to be able to work through within that uh, three, four hour time frame, I would have had no problem staying there and telling her, look, man, you just got to toughen up. 
But this dog could have easily yanked my throat out, let alone the six-year-old's. No clue. This pet owner thinks that the kid is inciting, or the children, or the strange guests in the house are the ones that are inciting the dog. This is our problem. Hey, newsflash, six-year-olds run around the house. Six-year-olds go like this when they see huge dogs that could bite their guts off. Okay? That's what happens in real life. They're just scared of dogs. They're bigger than them. Anything that they're that is bigger than them and they look intimidating, they're scared of. These are things that happen. So when you then decide that it's the human element that is being the issue, the only thing that is going to change the mind, and I'm not even sure this 100%, the only way that they're going to go ahead and put their dog away or make any type of adjustment separating the dog and the human element here is if the dog is actually growling or, heaven forbid, uh, takes a strike at one of the uh, one of the kids or, or one of the adults for that matter. You know, then maybe it registers that something isn't right here and there needs to be a change made in the immediate area. Not pet owner number one. Pet owner number one already taking the dog away, putting it in another side, keeping it outside, putting it in an attic, keeping it gated off from somewhere else, keeping it separated from everybody else to maintain the human aspect. Pet owner number two doesn't give a rat's ass about any of that. People need to adjust to the pet. I understand. We've come to your house. It's your house. That's where the dog lives. That's their element. And, you know, do we need to conform? I don't know. I don't know. I'm higher up on the food chain than the dog. We made the effort to come down and see you. So I do understand to a point, depending on size of the dog, if that would need to be accommodated by us. I don't think I was wrong in this instance. We had to get that. We had to get out of there. It wasn't going to get any better. And then having my sister-in-law blow up and make it such a, a to-do was very uh, unsettling to me. Didn't like to see that. Didn't want to have to make that whole trip down for my kids to then be having to, to take away from their aunt and their uncle, who they were very excited to see. But look, we made a day of it. I hung out with top men in D.C., and then we were able to uh, sightsee downtown Washington. If you follow me on the Facebook or the Twitter, you saw some pictures that I was able to take. And we did some walking now. Parked up on 9th Street. We came all the way down, watched, uh, saw the uh, Natural History Museum, the Smithsonian, the uh, uh, Natural History, American History Museum, the Monument, the Lincoln uh, we saw Jefferson, but we didn't go over to him. We saw the big pool that is just a big mud rectangle. Uh, we saw the National Aquarium, which should be nicknamed the National Ripoff. Let me tell you something. Here. Don't go in there. I've been here. Now I've been here. Family of five, 35 bucks. 20 minutes later, you're walking out wondering, how the hell did I get raped like that? And I didn't even see it coming. I didn't even see it coming. Well, it happens. It happens, and you have to be careful because next time it could happen to you, and that's not good. All right, so still no meathead. Anyway, sorry, I needed to wrap that up a little bit. So there are your two types of pet people. Uh, you can call in, weigh in if you want to. Let me know if I'm wrong. There's a overly accommodating pet person, and then there's, unless your kid just got bit by my dog, I don't give a shit, and your kid is going to have to adjust to my pet. You're at my house. Hey, <laughs> That's fine. That doesn't earn you many visits back from the top hosts in the barbecue and grilling industry.